And this video was brought to you by Dongo's Barbecue Chicken, the taste of the Mojave in your mouth. Now with 38% less hobo, because they keep escaping. Dongo's Barbecue Chicken, swallow my c**. Welcome back to Fallout 4 and the weekly mod roundup. I do try to make these for Fridays and I missed last Friday, but I was unable to source much to review, but I will still aim to do one of these a week. A giant hello to any new subs that have joined us since the last video, and if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I am at the Dongobot. First up, we have Balaclavas by Suicide5612. This adds a series of funky ski masks or balaclavas to the game that can be crafted in an armorsmith workbench. It's important to shove in your face right now that this mod requires all the DLCs plus armorsmith extended and AWKCR. It includes four different balaclava models, each with seven different colors, so you can easily mix and match your warrior wardrobe. Styles include the basic form with two eye holes, the mesh version with the meshed material covering the eyes, the Try version with an add-in mouth hole if you like to eat or perform fellatio whilst keeping warm. The wide version with one great big wide eye hole and the Cold Avenger Expedition version which is a brand of balaclava with an air filter on the front. Colours include black, blue, brown, green, grey, red and white. There are two versions of the balaclava, the H and the H2, so what's the difference? Well, the H2 version can sometimes support headgear that the H can't. I was pretty fortunate to be able to wear the same headgear with both versions, but if you find your headgear taking the place of the mask, try wearing it with a H2 version. There's no damage resistance pretty much because this is an aesthetic, but I do believe it gives you two rad resistance. The mesh itself is impressive, although you can see around the eyes that it doesn't quite touch the face, but it's really nothing too noticeable. Next we have Faction Field Outfits, also by Suicide5612. This adds multiple military style field outfits for the various factions in the Commonwealth. Those include the Brotherhood of Steel, the Minutemen, the Institute, the Railroad and the Gunners. Very good looking outfits with each faction's logo on the right arm. These act as normal clothing of course, so the player can put whatever arm they like over it, including chest pieces and leg and arm pieces. Each faction of course has its own colour, those being red for the Brotherhood of Steel, green for the Gunners, white for the Institute, blue for the Minutemen and brown for the Railroad. These can also be crafted at the Armorsmith Station, but I don't think they are on level lists, so you won't see any members of these factions wearing them, unless you kill them and then dress them up in it, which would be weird, but just do it anyway. The mod also comes with a variety of hats, including berets, knitted caps, security helmets, and operator caps that sport the faction's logos too. So you can stay loyal to your faction, but also mix and match the different hats to stay looking fabulous. I've also noticed that these outfits go very well with the balaclava, so you can be well prepared for the Commonwealth warfare whilst keeping out of the cold, keeping your identity a secret, or um, just blowing up British pubs I suppose. Lastly we have Mojave Vehicles by M150. We saw something like this a few months ago that involved rideable scooters and their Raider variants. But now we have a whole host of brand spanking new cars even though they still look like heaps of shit but we can still drive them. Yes, this adds 11 drivable vehicles to the game, and yes, I've tested out all of them and had a lot of fun with them, as you could tell if you saw my Twitter post. <laughs> to get these, just craft their grenades at the chem station and throw them for the car to appear. The vehicles include an Autogyro, which is a flying vehicle, a Brotherhood of Steel APC, a Fusion Flea, an Institute Mobile Lab, a pickup truck, a racing cart, a sedan, a station wagon, a street cleaner to sweep up all your dead, and a truck and a van.
There aren't many problems with this, but there is one that does really put a damper on the mod. That problem being that a few of the cars seem to stop still after only a few minutes into driving, and it won't start up again unless you exit the vehicle and get back in. But a minute later, it will just stop again. This has happened with around half of them, so I reckon this is something that really should be looked into. The only other issue is very minor, and that is when it comes to going down hills, some of the cars will often remain in a level position depending on the gradient of the hill. But to be honest, a mod like this should be expected to have a few issues like that because it's not a natural game mechanic. The auto gyro will stay at a set height off the ground and will automatically rise up or lower itself depending on the height of the terrain below. After you exit the vehicle, you have the option to turn it back into a grenade and put it back into your inventory. Well, that's all we have for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Once again, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I am at the Bot. Hello again to any of those who have only recently joined us, and I hope you'll continue watching. Links are in the description, and with all that being said, I will see you next time. Also, eat the Dongo's barbecue chicken.